It would be hard to find a group of people more insulated from in-person interactions than millennials today. Seamless delivers dinner, Tinder makes matches, headphones discourage chatting. We also grew up with things like caller ID and automated customer service that took the stranger interacting out of a lot of everyday errands. Less interacting with strangers in public means less flirting with strangers in public. How did young people become so stranger-averse? And what does that mean for dating? This is Ashley. She reports on trends in relationships and families, so she's interviewed a lot of people about their experiences dating. People who are pretty young, in their 30s, in their 20s, some of whom are in college. Technology has made the act of meeting people offline almost obsolete. With Tinder's estimated global user base at nearly 50 million, many people rely on apps as the primary way to date. Today's dating pool, I think, has a different skill set, being good at flirting in a way that translates to a text message. We can manage a lot through asynchronous communication. I can look at a text from you and I can really think about how I want to respond. I might pass my phone around to my friend group and have them weigh in on how they think I should respond. And there's a reason you never want to put your phone down. The apps are designed to be addictive, which makes it even harder to stop swiping once you're hooked. One thing that the founders of Tinder said about founding it was that they wanted it to feel like a game. They designed the app itself to feel like a deck of cards where you were flipping over one, then you kind of weigh in on it, approve of it, or discard it, then you could move on to the next one. And they wanted it to feel like something you could just do forever, kind of for fun to entertain yourself. When more and more people are finding dates from the comfort of their couch, the experience of dating becomes siloed from the rest of social life. I've heard people say sometimes they will have a good interaction or like kind of catch the eye of someone who's cute and then not say anything, just hope that they find them on the apps later <laughs> when they're swiping. Whereas like I think in prior generations, people had much more of half an eye turned out toward finding potential mates, potential partners, potential dates, just kind of during everyday life. It's hard to make a date offline when no one wants to talk to strangers. An entire generation of kids was once taught to fear them. Starting when we were little, we had the, the stranger danger philosophy among parents that really kept us away from people we didn't know because they might be out to harm us. Things that are very valid when you're, when you're a small child, but when you're an adult, maybe those aren't, aren't as appropriate. You've taught your children to be polite and friendly, but have you taught them when not to be? Hi there! Do you live around here? Stranger danger PSAs were popular in the 80s and 90s when millennials were growing up. The campaigns were developed in response to infamous child abductions at the time. Even today, their impact lingers. When I've talked to young people about what happens when they get approached by people who want to flirt with them in a, a public space is that they just sort of don't know what to do with that interaction. Ultimately, perhaps it's our priorities that have shifted, making the search for a mate less important. More people are delaying marriage. Meeting someone in any capacity is not necessarily the goal. There's a fear of falling in love that young people come by honestly because they often have been given a message from the time they were this big. It's education first, it's performance first, it's achievement first, it's ambition first. I have to have all these sorts of boxes checked off before I can even imagine bringing another person into my life. So what has all this meant for love and partnership? For one, traditional social networks are broadening. We are much more likely to date across a significant cultural difference than we were in years past. And so one in six new marriages bridges a significant socio-demographic difference like race, like ethnicity, like faith. But while some things have changed, others remain the same. People forget it was always hard to meet someone. Now there's just different problems. People are still looking for the same things and the milestones are the same, the big questions are the same. How people find each other is the, the thing that has changed. Thanks for watching The Idea File, and if you like what you see, you can follow us on our YouTube channel.